So welcome, 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 my beloved, brilliant brother Akin. And as always at Setsi, we begin all things by acknowledging and giving thanks to our creator. We acknowledge all the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation, all those whose bones lie at the bottom of the transatlantic, all those who said freedom or death. We acknowledge and give thanks to all our elders, the community stalwarts, whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So brother Akin, can you please share a bit about your remarkable background and your incredible work with our listeners and viewers? Wow, thank you. Thank, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Akin Abusari. I'm a singer, songwriter. Uh, I consider myself a serial entrepreneur. I've had the privilege over the years of you know, running different um, businesses from tech uh, companies to uh, different startups, even you know, as a farmer and, and you know, just an entrepreneur in general. Uh, my work with Pomoja, Pomoja is a, a not-for-profit organization that I started in 2021 uh, with my wife. Uh, the word Pomoja itself means together in Swahili. Uh, the concept or the idea behind Pomoja is for us as a people to come together collectively and pool our resources together. Our vision uh, with Pomoja is to build on the legacy of our ancestors by leveraging the power of group economics. Uh, if you're familiar with you know, the Caribbean, I'm sure you've heard words like partner or susu, uh, even in Africa on the continent, I'm from Nigeria, by the way, and on the continent in Nigeria, we have Ajo. We have, there are different names based on the tribal uh, ethnic group. Uh, so this is a similar concept for us to come together, pull our resources together, and you know, invest in different projects to build generational wealth. So that is the work that we've done. And in 2021, uh, about 31 of us uh, collectively were, were able to purchase 100 acres of uh, arable farmland in Kowata Lakes, Ontario, which is about an hour outside of Toronto. Uh, so yeah, this is a great work that we're doing with Pomoja to grow our own food, yes. That's beautiful, my brother. I appreciate your leadership and your Thank you. the work that you and your wife do is truly remarkable. And it's been a joy Thank to you. watch uh, and see the progress. So once again, Thanks. I appreciate your leadership. You represent us well. You make our ancestors proud. So my next question, what is, what's inspiring you right now? What has you curious or what's keeping you up at night? Wow. Uh, what, wow. Really good, really good question. Uh, what inspires me, I'll say, uh, you know, seeing my people win. Right, uh, you know, seeing the joy on on you know their faces, considering the 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 struggles and the pain and you know everything that we've been through as a people. When I see uh, us win, even if it's something so something small, uh, even the small wins, I'm really really happy. Uh, that inspires me. Uh, bringing joy to other people definitely uh, inspires me as well. Um, and making the world a better place, right? Uh, spreading love uh, instead of hate and just making so, you know, everyone feels good, even if you're not from the community or you're not Black or African, <laughs> but, you know, you're, you're still comfortable uh, and, you, you you know, you're doing well, you're doing, uh, you know, good. So that is something that inspires me definitely to help people uh, realize their potential and, be the best version of themselves. So those are the things that inspire me. Uh, what keeps me up at night? <laughs> not doing that. So not, uh, you know, I think I have a mandate in my life. Not that I think, I know I have a mandate. And my mandate is to, you know, to help others uh, achieve their dreams and fulfill their destinies. So I feel that is uh, my own mandate. So if, I'm, if I, I'm, I feel like I'm not doing that or, um, you know, I'm struggling to do that, then, Definitely, that keeps me up at night because it keeps me thinking and it keeps my mind working. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Incredible, incredible, brother. So my next question, what challenges and barriers are you facing in your work right now? And what are some of the ways you and your colleagues are going about overcoming some of these challenges and barriers? Mm, another great question. Uh, one of the barriers for sure is um, the, uh, trust, the trust factor. I think uh, dealing with, you know, um, a community that, you know, has been through so much and, you know, the trauma, the lack of trust, uh, you know, even the pain from slavery, colonialism, and even all that, 
uh, is a bit challenging. And a lot of people within uh, our community have been, um, what's the right word now, have been born in a way, uh, maybe through other investments or uh, participating in, in groups that don't really turn out to do anything beneficial for, for them and they end up losing. So based on some of those factors, there's a lot of trust issues within our community. So trust is definitely one of the uh, main issues that we deal, we deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and how we're mitigating uh, the trust issues with 100% transparency. Uh, for instance, like we, we open our uh, bank accounts so everyone can see <laughs> in membership meetings. Uh, we make sure that not just uh, few people have access to the to the to the account. We make sure that approvals are done by a, a group of us. Uh, we have a board uh, as a registered organization in Canada. We have a, a board that is functioning as well. We have frequent touch points meetings. Um, all in all, we make sure that you know we're 100% transparent. Meeting minutes are shared. Uh, members have their say, so that's really important. And they vote, and you know, and motions when motions are passed, and so on and so forth. We communicate that. So yeah, we just make sure we we let everybody know what's going on. We make sure everyone is involved, um, and that's how we keep things going. Yeah, that's beautiful, my brother. That's beautiful. So mm -hmm. my next question. Do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? Uh, I'll say top priorities for uh, top priority for us this year, at least, is to be debt free. Right? Uh, currently, we have a mortgage on our farm, on our hundred acre farmland, um, but our goal is to be uh, debt free. We want to completely pay off our debt. Uh, imagine owning hundred acres of farmland where we have no mortgage on it. So that is basically our goal and our uh, our vision for the year. That's a beautiful vision. <laughs> That's a beautiful vision, my brother. I give thanks. I give thanks. <laughs> yeah. So my next question, yeah. just because you're dealing with farmland, how do you mm -hmm. feel about the future of food sovereignty, food security, or even land access in Canada? What does that future look like to you? Are you optimistic? Are you hopeful? Are you pessimistic? I'll say now, uh, considering the fact that we, we have 100 acres of farmland, I'm optimistic. <laughs> I pray other people from other provinces can, you know, look at what we're doing with regards to Pamoja and even do the same, right? Even other people from other ethnic groups can look at the template of what we've done with Pamoja and try to implement the same thing within their own communities as well. Uh, the issue of food sovereignty and food security are big issues, especially within our community. Uh, we we don't grow our own food. We depend on others for our own food, for instance. Some of the cultural foods that we love, um, that we enjoy from our, you know, our, our backgrounds and stuff like that, we have to depend on others to eat those food in, uh, foods or buy them in Canada. Uh, like kalaloo, for instance, uh, sp spinach, uh, cassava, some of the food we enjoy, you know, uh, we have to depend on other people now to, to get those food. So, Food security, food sovereignty is a big issue. We want to be able to at least control our own food sources. And another troubling stat is if you look at all the farmers that are in Canada, less than 3% are black, right? Uh, you know, how many black farmers do we really have? Uh, you know, so I think with Pamoja, we're changing some of those uh, stats and we're definitely uh, making uh, improvements. And, you know, we want to be able to at least control the food that we eat. <laughs> And to add to that, our farm is 100% organic. So, you know, a lot of the food we see today that we purchase in some of the sto grocery stores are not 100% organic, right? Sometimes they're labeled organic, but they can be like maybe 10% organic or 5% organic. But with Pamoja Farm, we know we can guarantee that our food, vegetables, crops, everything, 100% organic. So that too. Um, so I'm op optimistic, definitely. That's beautiful, my brother. I give thanks for your leadership and the importance yeah. right now navigating this, the, the GMO crisis on the planet, the pesticides, the hormones. The, exactly. The, it's absolutely absurd in terms of our food and 
my my wife that's her vocation a lot of her work so i i vicariously learn about food sovereignty and food security through her work um oh, wow. thank you. through some of the work that i've done with um other, other groups and, and colleagues but yeah i give thanks for your resilience your tenacity and your leadership thank you but my second last question what is your ultimate goal and what does success look like and feel like to you and your colleagues wow ultimate goal uh for us uh is to you know at least control our own food sources, <laughs> you know, grow from uh, farm to table, uh, restaurants, or, you know, we have grocery stores, we distribute our own food, uh, cultural foods at least, um, and to be able to put money back into the community. Like one of the challenges we have as a people is, you know, the, the black dollar circulates, I believe, uh, six hours within our community. It's even less than that. I think in six hours, the money is, uh, is gone to other, other communities. So uh, the concept of Pomoja is to try to keep the, 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 the black dollar within the community so we can employ uh, other people within the community. We can help our community grow. Uh, so for instance, if we grow our vegetables and harvest and distribute our vegetables to you know all the popular grocery stores that some of our uh, community members go to to purchase their their food if they buy they see a package vegetable from pomoja if they purchase their package goods that money is going back into their own pocket because in they're a member of pomoja they're a member of the organization first and foremost and then when they purchase the vegetables the funds is going back into their own pocket so it's a it's a it's a it's a circle that we want to keep going right so i'll say long-term vision for us is to continue to grow that circle and to make sure that you know the black dollar stays within the community, <laughs> at least for let's say six days <laughs> at, at, at the minimum, yeah, <laughs> instead of six hours. <laughs> ashe, ashe, ashe. So my <laughs> last question, beloved brother, do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? Man, this is a a call to all like minded. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know, out there uh, to join uh, the movement. The word Pamoja, again, it means together. Um, you know, if you want to go far, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So the concept of Pamoja is for us to definitely go far, right? Not just, you know, for this generation, but for generations to come. So my uh, call would be for like-minded folks to get involved, uh, to definitely reach out to us, pamojafarms.ca or pcif.ca. Reach out to us, find out how you can become a member. Uh, you can, I can just let them know right now also, like with $1,800, you can become a co-owner of our 100 acres farmland. You will benefit from the farm, meaning anything we grow on the farm, any revenue we generate from the farm, you get to partake of that revenue. In addition to that, you get a portion of land, about 400 square feet, where you can grow your own uh, vegetable for your household. So definitely something to look into. Um, yeah, and join the movement. Let's do this together, together. We have the land already, 100 acres. Some countries are not even up to 100 acres in size. <laughs> so we have 100 acres of land. We can make this grow into something really, really amazing and that will benefit everybody. So get involved. Reach out to us. Let's grow this organization together. My brother, I so appreciate your leadership. As always, your diligence and your passion for this work. It's clearly a vocation. And as always at Setsi, we close the way we began by giving thanks and acknowledging our creator, by giving thanks and acknowledging the original stewards, the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, my good brother, for all that you do for so long. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. God bless. That's it.